Hey guys, and welcome to a, uh, another episode of Marvel Future Revolution. Today, I'm going to do something a little bit different, something I never thought I'd actually be doing. I'm going to give a reaction video to uh, Darth Microtransactions. Is Marvel Future Revolution dying in the state of the game kind of video that he pushed out today? It was something that I noticed, and it was something I had to react to, and I didn't want to like be like, hey, you know, I just reacted to this stuff without willy-nilly so let's jump into this there's a couple of points and parts in the video i'm not going to play all of their stuff um and if he decides he wants me to take it down i'm a small ass channel i'll take it down but uh here we go you know it is a state of the game talk with another youtuber that i've known for almost four years now me and him have played multiple games with each other seen the rise and fall of games per se and uh you know we we have a lot of informed opinions, I would say, about this game so far at the moment. So we want to talk kind of stay of the game as well as answer the question, is Marvel Future Revolution dying or is it dead on arrival? I've seen this uh, this comic creep up a few times now because I think people are starting to hit in-game. So we're going to break all of that down for you in this video. Let me know in the comments down below if you're interested in Well, oh, let's, let's talk about this. I, 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 this is the part of that I feel like YouTube puts a community so in distress and how the landscape of a game can be shifted by YouTube personalities uh, the most because I want you guys to think about this, right? Marvel Future Fight is a game that has been out for six years, since 2015. Marvel's Avengers is a game that has been out since um, 2020, uh, 2020. Um, you have Marvel Strike Force, which has been out for four years. Marvel Concepts of Champions. I think that game's like seven years strong or just as long as a little bit longer, I think, than uh, Marvel Future Fight. I think that game's been going for seven years, eight years. By and large, let's talk about Net Marvel in general. Cynic Alex, I think, I, I, you know, <laughs> obviously, I hate to promote another YouTube channel because I don't want you guys to go to those channels and I want you guys to stick with my channel, but... Cynic Alex is probably one of the best uh, mouthpieces, I guess, YouTubers that talks about things, all things net marble. Um, he has a good grasp on those. Is the game dying? No. Is the game going anywhere? No. You know why I know this? Because if you look at when Marvel Future Revolution, Marvel Future Fight first came out, it wasn't that great of a fucking game, to be perfectly honest. I remember playing Marvel Consist of Champions at the same time that that came out, and I hung with Marvel Consist of Champions, so I just could not keep up with that paywall anymore. And I didn't join into Marvel Future Fight until maybe a year after its release. A year after its release. And it, like I said, when it first released, it really wasn't that great a game. The graphics were definitely not on par with what you were getting from Marvel Contest of Champions. Um, those games, these games are not going anywhere. They have, like, just the very nature that they have the IP, the Marvel IP backing them, just says they're not going anywhere. Um, is the game dying? We've literally had uh 15 days of game yeah we can talk about all the players who were playing for 20 30 days you know prior to but dying um uh, most players like even some of the guys on my channel right here that comment all the time they're still working towards getting their characters level 100 and the game damn sure as hell is not dead on arrival i mean we don't have any of the major bugs, glitches, and things that Marvel's Avengers had when it got released, and it was still going a year later. So, yeah, I don't know about that commentary. But More anyways, let's save the game. Over uh, you know, informative talking type of content. His two minute as mark where they're just discussing guys. where will the game be heading in five years. There's people out there that haven't started the game yet, and they're wanting to know. Is this a game I should remotely be interested in? Is it going to be going, you know, down the tubes as time goes on? What's its current state of the game, etc.? I haven't really done yeah. a state of the game type of talk yet. I haven't really said my opinion on where I think the game is going to be in five years, etc. And my personal opinion on the longevity and audience retention of the game. So that's kind of what we're going to talk about today to give you guys a little bit of the top. So I'll stop this right here just to give you guys an idea, right? where's the game going to be in five years still fucking here okay still still here go look at some of marvel future marvel's uh properties especially with net marvel like marvel future fight and look at the cash in cash in value that brings to them and how much of a percentage they actually make off of that game versus some of their other properties like seven deadly sins you'd be surprised and guess what that game is still around 
I mean, you have other games that they've literally held on to, like Lineage and some of their other titles. They still hold on to those games. Marvel Future Fight is still around and it's going to probably and they've literally committed even though they've taken on this new property they've literally committed to still giving us new content and new modes inside marvel future fight so for instance inside marvel future fight this will probably help make this a fair use video uh inside marvel future fight with the shang excuse me sorry shang chi update that we just recently got we got a whole new timeline battle mode that was just added into the game so we legitimately have a, a whole new mode that was literally introduced to the game for players you literally can jump inside here and look, there's two bosses. I'm basically gonna choose from a bevy of my characters. I wanna take it on with a formidable team. I'm gonna go Noel. I don't really care who I fucking pick because I know I'm gonna wake wax ass on this because it's such an early level. But they're still giving us game modes. They just, they've been working on Marvel Future Revolution in tandem while delivering uh, top quality content, especially over the past year for Marvel Future Fight. You think this game's going somewhere? No, it's not going anywhere. Not at all. <laughs> But let's go. Let's keep going with this. I'm going to skip over here to the three minute mark. And let's see what he evidence. has to say. And what I would say is in the beginning, there was an absolute massive rush of both excitement, um, players yeah. uh, promoting the game, like going out of their way to be how excited they are about the game. You can even see this in my own videos being excited yeah. super much in the beginning. I, obviously, lots of spinning, etc. And it was about... At the 30 to 40 day mark, I believe, when we started to see um, some of the complaints creeping in because people started to hit in game. Now, back in the day, and I'm sure you could attest to this too, it was a little bit easier to hit what we would consider in game because they've changed some of the progression, yeah. how the, the questing system works. The progression is a little bit slower now. You can't delete and repeat all, it's to get free potential. And there were some other kind of tricks you could do. So I found this this conversation a little bit funny just because we're literally talking about back in the day. <laughs> we haven't even hit two months back in the day. <laughs> we haven't hit six fucking months. We haven't hit a year back. We are such an ADH. There's such an ADHD community in terms of like, you know, game gameplay that it's just it's really weird. Um, when we talk about back in the day, the game is still here. Most of the player base that weren't willing to just jump in on the VPNs and stuff like that in order to get to Toronto are just joining the game 15 days ago. We YouTube, I think, creates this atmosphere within games where it's like literally a what, what have you done for me lately kind of attitude, especially with the whale community where they literally are able to pay themselves all the way to the end that you generally come out with the outcome where this is the mentality back in the day. Back in the day, I was able to do this. Well, that was only 15 days ago. And we kind of get spun up in that cycle. Like, for instance, Marvel Future Fight releases a new update every month every month they're on a spin cycle where they planning out updates three to four months in advance and every month they release an update now they they did that for years and now we're literally at uh year number six for the game and they're releasing bi-monthly updates we get an update in the beginning of the month and then we get a mid-month update if you've been following my videos you see that we were literally talking about the the, Sh the shang chi update for the beginning of the month which just launched um you know two days ago on the seventh and in another 13 to 14 days we'll get a mid-month update which you know has been data mine and is looking to be another agents of atlas update for some of their og characters so there's no back in the day. We're still in the present right now. P players don't forget that we're in the present right now. You hit the in game, so and now they paced it out a little bit more. So as far as I see, it so yeah, I mean, is are we going to get to a point where we feel that excitement of the launch kind of dip down a little bit? Absolutely, and I think that might be what people are observing right now. Is there was all this hype, and now we're kind of starting to see things normalize, and the game's going to hit its stride and get to a place where we actually see it, it land uh, more long term. And so, I think for me, any kind of doomsday conversation of oh, the end game's shit, or you know, I don't know what's going to happen. So I agree with this one hundred percent every game hits a stride and it hits a player normalization i think you have to give it time to see 
where a game stabilizes at in terms of players because you're going to have a number of players that are really excited about jumping into a game and we're going to mad rush to the game like a lot of us literally like i want to play this at all costs and so we literally rush to the vpn there's going to be players that you know want to jump in on the alpha want to jump in on the beta want to jump in on the delta you know and they don't want to wait and they're going to always be that mad rush of excitement and the games need that to generate hype for, for the game but then you're gonna have another group of players that are going to jump in here and they're going to be like hey you know ah this wasn't really for me i don't really like it whether because of the pay the pay to win model pay to play model the free to play model whatever is going to affect them and they're going to want to jump off board and then you're going to probably level out it's the same thing in all games every game has hits that stride it's not until much later when you can actually determine like you know destiny for instance is having a serious surge in its uh player based demographics right now and i mean that's a good thing right it's not a bad thing at all so yeah every every game has that let's uh let's move over to 545 where they talk about repetition and i want to jump on this because i've done it in other videos so let's talk about that go back and you do it on the other characters it seems like the game is basically borderline just repetitive. Like all you're doing is yes. the story mission over and over and over again. All you're doing is the blitzes over and over and over again. And to that, my here's my counterpoint to that argument. I can't, I can't disagree with it because yeah, it's true, okay? But the fun part doesn't come from listening to the voice. So let's talk about repetition. I hate hearing this from gamers today. I, I legitimately hate hearing this. Every fucking game that you play is repetition. By its very nature, your life is repetition. You wake up and you do the same thing. Even if you're a YouTuber with free time, you wake up, you record a video, you post that video, you go back to playing that game to record new content, you post that video. Your normal Joe Blow who goes to his job, wakes up at a certain time in the morning to get in that drive for that commute to work, goes to work and does that thing. Life is repetition. It is. There's very few people that enjoy the comfortability of being able to just be free souls who can just go out and do anything that they want to when they please and when they have them. It, that, gaming is repetition. MMOs, by the very nature of them from their very beginning, my very first MMO that I played, you know, way back in the day, kind of dating myself, was Neverwinter Nights. And that was still repetition. And we still have a repetition now. It's about how innovative a company can be come with that cycle that 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 uh gaming cycle you know that thing that brings you back is it good like for instance forever for whenever i jump on a shooter based game i automatically want to go back to playing destiny because i feel like the mechanics in destiny the shooting mechanics are just so tight especially when they're married up with the supers and special abilities so it's always like that you, you, you just ah, yeah it, there's always repetition Let's skip on over to 640 where they talk about something here. And I'm going to bring this up because I don't know why this is a conversation about new More characters. characters into the game yes. would be my guess. Yeah, and so it's actually really interesting. I haven't seen a game exactly like this before, so I'm, I'm really curious to see how they're going to handle new characters to the game. And once magic hits, I think... Okay, so I'm going to show you guys this. It's going to help my fair use anyways. Let's go over here to the team. Right. So if I look at this team inside here and I'm going to bring this list up, this is the team list right now for Marvel Future Revolution for Marvel Future Fight. I literally got to go in here and type a character. You guys can name a character inside here. We just got two new characters introduced into the game. Katie from Shang-Chi, Wen Wu or the Mandarin from Shang-Chi was just introduced into the game. They were just introduced to the game. We've got OG characters in the game. Luna Snow is an OG character that was created by Net Marble. Sharon Rogers was an OG character that was created by Net Marble, put into the game. They've got some other characters in here that were completely OG that were actually implemented inside the Marvel Cinema, not the Marvel Cinematic, the Marvel Comics universe. So when you talk about how they're going to do with this, there's already a methodology out there specifically to this developer about what their plans are possibly going to be. Of course, they're going to add new characters. Uh, Joe Lee and um, God damn, now I can't remember. Donnie Kim, whatever fuck his name is. 
uh, basically came out and was like, hey, we plan on adding a lot of characters. They literally teased you right away with magic inside the game. I gave you a video to show you what magic could possibly look like. I need to do continue on my deep dive video so that way I can show you how these characters pit fare uh, inside the game to their counterparts inside of Marvel Future Fight. But you literally have those characters, so you literally can tell by just looking at the same developer to see exactly how those characters might fare, how new characters are going to fare. And I can tell you right now, it's going to be the same progression cycle. You're going to probably play the same exact uh, story modes, right, that you currently have. That's not to say that they're always going to be that same. Because, for instance, inside Marvel Future Fight, we literally had the normal story mode that we originally had. Then we had the True Shield story added. Then we had the All War added. And then we had the Future Ends Here storyline. I haven't unlocked it yet because I got to complete the All War storyline and I just haven't been and playing story mode because they've re revamped them even in that regard made them more streamlined and made them more feasible to play so or like repetitive to want to be at a repetitive play so even in regards to story for what they're talking about I have no doubt in my mind that Marvel Future Fight will do something like that. Like, if I look at another game that I play, it's a, a really top-tier MMORPG like uh, Black Desert Online. Even they, across the life cycle of the game, they've which I've been playing for years, they have revamped the storyline as well. So that's the good part, is that you're, you, you can always revisit content in order to make it more appealing to your player base. I haven't wanted, wanted to give away any of the story because I know a lot of people had didn't have the amount of time that i had with the game so i haven't been wanting to drive that across and be like hey this is what it is so i've been given a little bit of time please guys <laughs> get those characters because otherwise i'm gonna be posting spoiler videos soon for this okay but let's take a look um i think he goes in later to something that i i i want to point out to you guys as well where we're literally at this have point to do that got you okay. if they don't do that then it's just money on the tape no. they have Comment that I see a lot, which is, do you think they're going to bring a villain campaign at some point? Ah, yeah. please! I know. They have to do that. <laughs> Got you. Okay. If they don't... No, they're not going to bring a villain campaign. I can almost guarantee you that there's not going to be a villain campaign. Will you have the ability to play as villains? That's going to be more likely. For instance, of all of those characters that I showed you inside this pool, you notice I can play as Mephisto, I can play as Null, I can play as Thanos, I can play as the Black Order, I can play as fucking Apocalypse, I can play as Carnage, I can play as any villain I want to. I have no doubt in my mind, especially with the concept that they've established in this game, where you basically have a convergence world, so different characters of different effects can be in here, that we're most likely going to get villains. Now, if you had to ask me something like this about a game like marvel's avengers i would probably be more reticent because they're doing a story driven effect where they're introducing characters across a story could i see them adding a villain campaign that would probably tie in well to their game so that way now you can play i think it would be somewhere in there but introducing villain characters in this game is not is not a difficult thing we most likely are going to get villain characters i i don't the, the, the tools and assets are already there you can already kind of see the writing on the goddamn wall for this game if you just logged into marvel future fight it's not <laughs> there's nothing new there so then the last thing that they talked about because everything else wasn't really of you know great import it was just banter back and forth between the two of them came here which is something that we've previously talked about on a video and that related to pvp balance and I, thought I think they we had kind of points. agree. I mean, we got at least a good couple years out of this. We got new characters, new game mode invasions <laughs> been released already. I feel optimistic. I don't feel pessimistic yet. I'll say it's pay the win. We all agree on that. The expenses are way too much. Um, yeah. But I... Yeah, I'd, I'd like to see them address a way to make uh, the PvP parts of this game more balanced. Uh, if, yeah. if you're playing this game as a free-to-play player right now, there's very little drive to play the PvP game modes. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, you're this is where we're going to stop right here with the video. Sorry, it was a little bit long, but obviously it's a 15 minute video I'm giving a reaction to. So PvP is specifically the thing that concerns me the most. And I say that because they haven't yet done anything to balance out the game modes at all in terms of what you're playing. And I've kind of tried to do this on my channel to kind of show you guys the difference. Like I released a video like, is this the right game? 
game for you you know there's the free to play game and marvel avengers there's the pay to play game in um marvel future fight and then there's the pay to win game inside marvel future revolution but regardless of any of the game you can find yourself inside that game to play like for instance a lot of the content inside of marvel future fight is geared more towards pvp so i'm going to show you something like the daily rotation cycle right now inside marvel's uh future fight this is all the stuff that i need to complete on a day-to-day -day basis right so you're spending about this much time with the game whether it's story modes and specific missions specifically just those characters like for instance legendary battle got released and this is a whole story chapter that's related to the marvel cinematic universe for the introduction of some of the characters so i can literally log in here and i can play through various points of the movie and show and, and uh and shows and stuff like that that have come out um so i'm have a a, a, a ever expanding uh, loop of content to play every day with different game modes inside the game there's only a few modes inside marvel future fight that are really geared towards pvp and that's specifically like timeline battle but i can play in timeline battle gain rewards and still have fun i don't try to be ultra competitive in that mode right the same thing exists with a game mode like um alliance conquest right so you go to an arena and you have alliance battle which is just a normal mode for you to play and then it's alliance conquest which is you know your alliance versus alliance and then you have uh, alliance tournament which is more geared towards the whale side of the community but i don't ever have to engage in alliance tournament mode i can literally come inside here and i expect in my uh, that when we get the invasion mode with thanos that we're going to probably hit something in the realm of here where we have alliance conquest where it's basically alliance on alliance but we're going to have server on server and it's going to probably be a map where we are probably trying to isolate and hold down areas or something like that inside the game i expect that more so than i expect anything else and the point being to show you is that I was the development team and the, the community moderators are the same people from Marvel Future Fight. So if you're ever looking to see what the possibility of Marvel Future Revolution is, take a look at Marvel Future Fight. The, the, the application doesn't lie. The Marvel Future Revolution, for all intents and purposes, is a spiritual successor to Marvel Future Fight. And when you start to look at the game modes more, you can see that. Now, I will say that Marvel Future Fight is more PvE oriented and PvE pve friendly than marvel future fight i've got a few modes that i can play inside marvel future revolution that kind of you know um push me to playing playing in those modes but ultimately overall you know most of the content that are given the rewards are locked into this arena mode right here because you know the raid yeah it's going to help me with my specialization for characters but you know like for instance for me i'm almost completed in my specialization for dr strange I'm looking forward to other characters releasing and once I finish my Doctor Strange build out, I probably will stop, you know, using specialization points so that way when a new character is released, I can gear myself up for those characters, especially one specific that I want to because there's a lot more time and investment that goes inside into some of the characters inside Marvel Future Revolution and I think they understand that. They understand that there's going to be a cycle. I've been playing since launch and I haven't paid as much as some of the whales and i see that's the problem i haven't paid as much as some of the whales in order to progress in the game and i've said this in other videos before if you're a whale you've paid to be at the end of the content because you paid to get there you didn't enjoy the pro well you might have enjoyed the process in your way and there's nothing wrong with that but that's where you're at so now you have nothing to do and now i'm going back to do some of the other characters that i'm maybe not so much vested in and now what do i have to do because now i'm playing through story modes and missions that i don't necessarily want to play through as characters like for instance i don't have a great desire to play as any of the other seven characters because out of them my favorite character is dr strange so i'm kind of fully vested in that character but i spend time leveling up those characters slowly and i'm not paying my progression all the way to the end so that way that character's sitting at 
100. I'm not racing. It's about the journey, guys. Remember, I'll keep saying that. It's about the journey. It's not a marathon. Enjoy what is before you so that way it doesn't feel repetitious and just get there naturally. You know, like I said to you guys, even, you know, credit to Darth Microtransit because even he said the game is play to win 100%. And don't spend money on the game if you can't spend money on the game. And if you feel like spending money, feel like spending money. Don't hate on the whales. Don't hate on the free to play. It's as simple as that because we all need each other in order to game have its longevity. All right, guys. So I'm going to kind of end that off. I thought it was a pretty decent video by uh, Darth Michael Transaction. I just felt like it was way too early to be talking about the state of the game 15 days in from global launch. Just felt a little disingenuous. But. I do get where they were going with the discussion and I appreciate the discussion and hopefully in three months, especially after the release of Ileana and, um, you know, the invasion mode with Thanos, we get a better idea in a sense for those things. So guys, let me know what you think about the, uh, about the video. This is my first reaction video ever. I'm not sure about the parameters of these things. I'll include a link to this original video. So if you feel like watching it, you can, but all right, guys, until next time, peace.